huge fire broke out at a building near the high security secretariat complex in Manipur's capital Imphal. The building is just a few hundred meters from the official bungalow of Chief Minister Biren Singh. Uh, four fire trucks came to the site and doused the blaze this evening. Uh, that's what the police has been saying, adding that they are checking what caused the fire. The incident happened within a week of fresh violence igniting in Manipur's Jiribam district bordering Assam between the valley-dominated Mete community and the hill-dominant uh, uh, tribes. Uh, in fact, uh, at this hour, we have our colleague Ratnadeep Chaudhary um, reporting on the fire in Manipur. Uh, um, Ratadeep, it seems it's quite hazardous. It, it happened a few hundred meters within uh, the chief minister's uh, official bungalow. Tell us a little bit about what's the status now and uh, do we know of any injury uh, due to the fire? Well, uh, what we are hearing from uh, police sources is that uh, uh, there have been, a, uh, you know, the fire tenders which uh, reached there at that location, uh, which is in a very highly secure uh, uh, area of the state capital, Imphal. Uh, the building which uh, was on fire, in fact, now there, uh, you know, the, the fire tenders have been able to bring the fire uh, under control and is being doused at this moment. Uh, that uh, area you have the next building to it is actually the headquarters of the uh, uh, you know kuki Ingpi, which is the you know apex body of the kuki tribe uh, that building was in fact uh, targeted uh, in last year's ethnic violence uh, it, uh, it was vandalized and a part of it was uh, uh, set ablaze as well and uh, this uh, particular building is uh, almost in the vicinity of uh, the kuki Ingpi headquarters it is uh, less than 100 meter from the state secretariat's new building about 200 meters away from the chief minister's official residence and about 250 uh, meters away from the police headquarters. So it is a highly secure zone and it is uh, basically uh, uh, in front of a uh, uh, you know, series of uh, government residences where very uh, you know, high ranked official, top officials including IAS officers stay. So in that kind of a locality a fire breaking out in an, a, a kind of a building where no one was there. Uh, it was uh, there was nobody staying there. Uh, also, you know, the police sources are but not ruling out uh, chances being of any sabotage right now because or you're saying arson. that it is in the VIP area. Is there a, is, are there allegations of conspiracy? Well, uh, there have been uh, some social media posts, uh, but uh, what police is saying that they would investigate this. They do, uh, the exact reason of the fire has not been ascertained as of now, but uh, the focus is in terms of dousing the fire. They've been able to control the fire. And uh, remember, uh, this comes uh, within a week of last week's uh, fresh spell of violence in Ziribam district of Manipur, which borders Assam. And uh, therefore, uh, this kind of incident uh, in a very highly secure area. In fact, uh, this afternoon there have been also uh, some skirmishes in the border areas between Bishnupur and Churachanpur district of uh, Manipur. So therefore, uh, you know, uh, this, this somehow uh, puts a question in terms of the security uh, apparatus as well because this is a high security zone. So if, if it is, uh, although the uh, nature of the fire is not known or the reason, but police, since police sources are not ruling out a case of arson, so if, if it is a case of arson, uh, later on, if, if it, it comes in the investigations, then, then this also looks like, uh, you know, the, it, it, is, it would be a concern for the security establishment right. given the fact this area is a highly secure area. Right. We'll still have to get those reports as to what caused the fire. Thank you very much, Ratnadeep, for joining us with all those details. Now, a committee looking into the alleged discrepancies in a report by a non-judicial mem member of the Juvenile Justice Board in the Pune Porsche case crash. Pune Porsche crash case has found lapses in the report, sources said. The JJB's non-judicial member has released the 17-year-old teen who allegedly drove the Porsche that rammed into two IT engineers and killed them on bail within 15 hours of the accident. The committee, in a 100-page report through the Social Justice Department now said, among the many red flags in the way Dr. Danvade handled the matter, he did not consider the flaws in the blood report, which did not come from the police. Show cause notices have been issued against both the non-judicial members and answers have been sought.
on the floors. After Pune, a speeding car has rammed into a market in Nagpur and hit people standing on the roadside. Five people have been injured in the incident. A Skoda car hit five people who were standing there. Cops have uh, said that the accident happened around 12.30 this afternoon when a miner working in a garage drove the car on the road instead of parking it. During this, instead of the brake, his foot fell on the accelerator and the car went out of control and hit a handcart parked on the side of the road. The police has taken the miner into custody and sent his blood, blood sample for testing and is also interrogating the garage owner and the Skoda car owner. At least 14 people were killed after a tempo traveller carrying 23 passengers fell into a gorge in Uttarakhand. The accident took place on the Rishikesh Badrinath Highway uh, near Raitoli in Rudraprayag district. The minibus fell into the Alaknanda River and teams of the State Disaster Response Force and police are currently engaged in rescue op operations. Uh, that's what the officials are saying. People who were standing on the roadside have sustained injuries in the accident. Also said, the injured people have been airlifted to Ames in Rishikesh. Uttarakhand CM has also met the injured people in Rishikesh. आज बड़ी दुखद घटना यहाँ पर हुई है और एक टेम्पो ट्रेवलर जो कि दिल्ली से चला था वो रुद्रप्रयाग के पास जो है दुर्घटनाग्रस्त हो गया है और घायलों को कुछ लोगों को रुद्रप्रयाग में ही उनका इलाज कराया जा रहा है और कुछ लोगों को यहाँ पर एयर लिफ्ट करवाकर एम्स में भर्ती करवाया गया है और सभी की जो भी घायल हैं उनको पूरा स्वास्थ्य लाभ उनका ठीक प्रकार से हो अच्छी प्रकार से उनकी केयर हो उस पर हम लोग पूरी तरह से ध्यान दे रहे हैं to some political news now, Sharad Pawar, Uddhav Thakre and Prithviraj Ch Chavan, the leaders of the Mahavikas Agadi held a joint press conference in Mumbai and thanked the people of the country for supporting the alliance in the state in the Lok Sabha elections. Sharad Pawar of NCP-SCP took a swipe at Prime Minister Nandra Modi saying that wherever he held roadshows and rallies, the MVA registered victories in those places in the Lok Sabha polls. एक ऐसा सेशन से निकली है इसके दुनिया का ऐसे सी काजू नस्ता जी काजू भी की जाती है सी अंकित हुए ना फनाने सच्चे से गई रफ़ करे अंकित एक दो साक्षी से ऐसी कही जाएगी कि कहीं जो कौन सा उत्तेज होंगे अंकित कहीं जो कौन सा या फूली किसी से ले ले सच्चे से कहीं जो कौन सा कोसा नहीं जाने दिया उन तेजों के अनेक लोग कारण नस्ताना आलू फंसे हैं आज इस चुनाव में आए ये सास सर सर हर सच्चे से गई आफर है और ये सच्चे से गई आफर से समझे यह न्यूज़ निकली हुई है लोकनीय ये कई हुई कई सी जैसे तुम सांस फंसे सीखते हो जैसे आफर चाहती हो तो कई सांस फंसे सीखते हो जिससे कि अंशावल अंशिन सिंचाई वाले लोकन से सोच रहे थे संजीव जावेद ने जब लोग से संफुल्य फनाना विचार करूं खुश नहीं है इस मुड़ा मरे हे जे क्या आता मोदी सरकार होते थे आता इंडिया सरकार जाले हे सरकार कितनी दिवस साले हाँ एक मोटा प्रश्न है कारण आमचा बदल नहीं मंटला जात होता कि युति नैसर्गिक युति यानी अनैसर्गिक युति तो आता तेज हे नैसर्गिक का है का अनैसर्गिक का है हा सुधा एक मोटा प्रश्न है एकूणच देशातली जनता हा निवुकी निमित्ता जागी जा फार मोट यश हा निवुकी वेला अपने मिलाल मी मानतो आनामें का प्रश्न आते अपन विचारा तला उत्तर दयाच प्रयत्न करूँ जेव जेव तीन पक्ष एकत्र पत्रकार परिषद घर अर्थ आ पृथ्वीराजजी ने संगित है कि आम एक प्राथमिक बैठक अगर प्राथमिक बैठक Another day of politics dominating Delhi's water crisis as both Congress and BJP took to the streets with a matka photo protest over 
what they alleged was the mismanagement by the Aam Aadmi Party government that has led to the capital facing this prolonged crisis even as Delhi is hit by another heat wave. Aam Aadmi Party has appealed once again to Himachal and Haryana to allow water to reach the capital while Himachal has agreed an official will go to Chandigarh tomorrow to coordinate but even as Neta's bicker, it's people who are suffering and there needs to be a long-term solution. <laughs> High drama on the streets of the national capital as BJP and Congress both held Matka for protest over the current water crisis. BJP protesters marched with Matkas to Water Minister Atashi's constituency office in Kalkaji and accused the government of mismanagement. इन्होंने जल तो दे दिया फ्री लेकिन 10 साल से पाइप्स की मेंटेनेंस नहीं करी जहां पे 15 से 20 परसेंट अगर आप वाटर का जो वेस्टेज देखेंगे जो बड़ी पाइप से जो जल गई हैं कट गई हैं पूरी की पूरी रस्ट हो गई है अगर 20 परसेंट पानी यहां वेस्ट हो रहा है तो आप समझ सकते हैं कि जो पानी दिल्ली जनता को मिलना चाहिए वो वेस्ट हो रहा है इनकी नॉन मैनेजमेंट के कारण इनके मेंटेनेंस की जो इश्यूज है उसके कारण this was Congress first protest against the Aam Aadmi Party since they came together for the Lok Sabha polls in Delhi. पिछले काफी समय से हम दिल्ली की सरकार और केंद्र सरकार को ये आगाह करते रहे हैं कि जैसे-जैसे गर्मी बढ़ेगी पानी की समस्याएं बढ़ेंगी तो हमने ये फैसला किया कि दिल्ली के सभी 280 ब्लॉक्स में कांग्रेस पार्टी बटका वोट प्रदर्शन करेगी और इस सोती हुई सरकार को जगाने का काम करेगी Meanwhile in yet another U turn Himachal has agreed to release water for Delhi Meri aaj subah Himachal Pradesh ke mukhyamantri Sukhvinder Sukhu ji se baat bhi hui hai Unhone bhi assurance diya hai ki jo Himachal Pradesh se support ki zarurat hai jo unse kaagzaat ki zarurat hai jo information ki zarurat hai वो जल्द से जल्द अपर यमुना रिवर बोर्ड को प्रोवाइड की जाएगी हिमाचल के पास जितना भी पानी है अपने राज्य की जरूरत को छोड़कर हम सारा पानी चाहे दिल्ली है चाहे कोई और राज्य हम उनको देने के लिए तैयार है जैसे कि पानी ने आना है तो हरियाणा से होकर आना है फिर वो दिल्ली पहुंचेगा तो वो हरियाणा गवर्नमेंट से दिल्ली को सहमति बनानी है हमें कोई हिच नहीं है Aam Aadmi Party led Delhi government has now asked for an urgent intervention from the center calling the situation in Delhi grave. But the bigger question remains that when will the stakeholders come together to give a permanent solution to the aggrieved residents here. Now in Delhi with camera person Prem Singh, this is Ishika Verma for NDTV. Now, there is a by-election scheduled following the recent death of DMK MLA in Vikravandi, which is in Tamil Nadu. AI DMK is set to boycott Vikravandi by-election. Uh, they've said DMK can indulge in violence and money power. DMK, on the other hand, says that AI DMK is not taking part because they are sure of defeat. PMK has fielded C. Anbumani as uh, the NDA candidate and DMK has already fielded Anur Siva. Vikravandi by-elections are scheduled for the 10th of July. Now, DMK leader and Tamil Nadu Chief Minister MK Stalin took a jibe at a PM Modi saying that one sweet box from Rahul Gandhi shattered the PM's eight visits to the state. He emphasized the significant political impact that Rahul Gandhi had in the state as the DMK swept the Lok Sabha elections. The ruling DMK in Tamil Nadu celebrated the clean sweep of its alliance in the Lok Sabha polls with a thank you meet in Coimbatore. In the Kutani, one set of Kudada, in the last time, over Kachigalayam, IT, ED, CBA, Punda Purana, and Pukalavichi Maratanga, Congress get chicken. 
My colleague Sam Daniel joins me for more on this story. Uh, thank you very much, Sam, for joining us. What is the larger political message that Stalin is trying to convey here? Ricky, I think he has, uh, he's trying to make at least three important political messages. One is that he is giving credit for Congress leader Rahul Gandhi for the 40 on 40 victory secured by the DNP alliance in Tamil Nadu, particularly referring to his gesture of giving a sweet box during a campaign in Coimbatore to N.K. Stalin. And that, Stalin says, put to rest the kind of narrative Prime Minister Modi at that point in time tried to set by frequently campaigning in Tamil Nadu. Secondly, he's trying to reiterate that there is defeat in Modi's victory and there is victory in India Alliance's defeat, saying that Modi's party, the BJP, is still in minority without the support of Naidu and uh, Nitish Kumar. He wouldn't be in power now. And that although the India Alliance could not form the government, their good numbers in the parliament as opposition effectively prevents the BJP from, in the, in the sense, from changing the constitution or bringing about such major changes in India. Lastly, he's also recollecting the kind of bitter campaign, particularly the BGP had against the opposition at that point in time, referring to the comments by Prime Minister Modi at that point in time against Muslims, which he himself denied later. Secondly, about the kind of heat faced by Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and the Jharkhand Chief Minister and the way the ED had frozen bank accounts of the Congress and the Communist Party. And lastly, there is a political message in Coimbatore. Coimbatore is the place which is once the traditional bastion of the AADMP. And this time, it was here, BJP's Tamil Nadu chief Anamale had fought and lost. And it's from here, the DMK is hosting or holding its uh, victory or Thanksgiving rally, sending again a strong message that the BJP cannot really expand its footprint in Tamil Nadu. Lastly, the BJP has denied these allegations saying that the Prime Minister never meant or never spoke ill of the Muslims and that the action taken by the central agencies have nothing to do with the party, but they are something like the law taking its course. Rita. Time for a quick break on the show. More on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back. One of the regular faces of all the three Modi government have been Sarbananda Sonowal, who has retained the ports, shipping and waterways ministry and is seen as some uh, someone on whom the Prime Minister reposes a lot of faith. Talking exclusively to NDTV's Ratnadeep Chaudhary, he said about a host of things and, and a few things that are also expected to come up in the next few months. Joining us at this moment on NDTV Network exclusively is Union Minister for Port Shipping and Waterways, Mr. Sarvanan Sonwal, somebody who has been part of the Modi government for three times. It's a hat-trick for Mr. Modi, it's a hat-trick for you. And you retain a very crucial ministry. You have been the minister for this ministry for the last five years and you retain it. And the country has recently done the Charbahar port deal. What is the way ahead? What is the mandate that the Prime Minister has given you this time with the Ministry? What are your you know, uh, key areas where you are going to work? Look, uh, being the largest transporter of the country and in the maritime sector, in the maritime threat, mainly under the dynamic leadership of Honorable Prime Minister, now the whole country is progressing first. And it is the fastest growing economy in the world under the visionary leadership of Honorable Prime Minister. And that is why, as he has set the target very clear for the people of the country, the next five years, India will be one of the top three economy of the world. So to achieve that milestone, we'll have to contribute a lot from my ministry. We'll have to work day and night, whatever like agenda, scheme, whatever like in a program we have adopted so far in the maritime sector for the like you know modernization mechanization digitization and also for coastal shipping inland waterways and like you know the uh, kind of cargo handling capacity to be enhanced significantly and like you know turn around time in many parameters we have already been placed 
by the wall bank in a very very like an uncomfortable position it is happening because the honorable prime minister's vision his untiring effort his like a boss competent leadership and because of his leadership now the whole country is signing